Hey y'all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south, more specifically, Middlesboro, Kentucky. And I'm here to see something magnificent. You see, back <clears throat> in 2008, there was a nationwide hoax where a Sasquatch was found by a pair of people, of men, in Georgia. They alleged to have found a Sasquatch dead in the woods and they froze him in their freezer and were ready to make national headlines. I remember this coming on TV. I remember actually getting kind of excited about it because it was like the biggest high profile Bigfoot story I'd ever seen. They actually showed video of this uh, Bigfoot in a freezer, clearly a Bigfoot. And um, turns out, uh, I think they were supposed to actually be on Good Morning America and then just like no showed. And then I think very quickly after that, turns out the whole thing was a massive hoax. They had taken a costume, a Bigfoot costume, rammed it full of animal intestines, and tried to pass it off as a money-making scheme. And one of the, I think one of the uh, one of the perpetrators was a used car salesman. The other was a actually a, a deputy, and uh, he got ended up getting fired for the debacle. And for some reason. We're actually not <clears throat> near Georgia right now. We're in Kentucky. And allegedly, this museum, the Bell County Historical Museum, has the original suit, the original fake Bigfoot hoax. Follow me. Let's check this out. It's actually a Pokemon go friendly zone and it's nice when when places and invite people to play pokemon some places don't enjoy this sort of thing uh, the holocaust museum in dc i know is very anti pokemon go but in that case i understand it but it's but it's nice to see local businesses using pokemon go as a way to to draw people in and 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 oh oh dear they're they're closed they are totally closed okay let me let you guys in on a on something um, I had <laughs> taken a road trip probably only a week ago uh, to film some things here in Middlesboro and I found out about the Sasquatch back then. I went to the museum and it was closed because it was a Monday and the museum happened to be closed on Monday. It's supposed to be open today. The lights are off. The door is locked. I drove over two hours just to go here. All right, as I was sitting on the steps of the museum, like a sad puppy contemplating life. A friendly man named Kevin came up and said, oh, it's the fall festival, the museum's not open today. But the good news is that we've taken the Sasquatch and we've moved him over to the Social Security building and set up a temporary display. So let's go see that daggum Sasquatch. Check out this. This is a house made of coal, built in 1926 to celebrate the coal mining industry, and somehow it's managed to not burn down. Who do I tell that to? Anybody that you see. Nice. Um, well, here he is. This is him. His hair is a little messed. <laughs> Can you tell me um, how this got over here in Kentucky? I know this originally occurred in Georgia. Yeah, well, you know the story then. Yes. Um, the gentleman made a hoax. Uh, yeah. Started in northern Georgia. Um, Tom Biscardi, in searching for Bigfoot, bought it. And uh, $50,000. They had a press conference in California, and everything was uh, done there. But... Um, in the end, Tom bought it, and his son TJ and their group, Searching for Bigfoot, went to Georgia, picked it up. Uh, there's a film called Anatomy of, a, of a, a Bigfoot Hoax that shows you that whole story of them retrieving it. So they get it, and it was in a freezer, uh, frozen, solid ice over it, and as they began to thaw it, of course, they caught on that it was fake, and it was stuffed with animal parts. and. Um, that's that story, you know, and uh, T uh, Tom announced it, that it was a hoax, it was a suit, and after it was all over, um, TJ, the son, thought it all out and uh, basically, unceremoniously, rolled it up, threw it in the truck, and at the time, he was living in Middlesbrough, and um, he brought it back here, and 
when he left Middlesbrough, when he moved away, he, he hid it at somewhere. And it stayed there for nine years. And when they came through town last, uh, they come here periodically to the region. Uh, we did an event with them at the museum. And uh, just as an afterthought, TJ mentions, hey, I still got the suit. Would y'all want that? And of course we did, and, and that's how we got it. And this is the first time, well, our acquisition of it is the first time it's ever been displayed. If you notice, the newspaper, all they ever had were like clips, small mm -hmm. photos, not even a full photo. And so this was the first time in all of that that it was ever shown, uh, not only to the public, but even the press. Awesome. And he's still, he's still a little smelly. <laughs> you know, you can imagine, you can imagine. Shoved with animal guts and frozen. Yeah. And uh, you can probably tell when you're close like that that he is sort of makes sure he's been he's been cut apart and you know they, they actually had a horse head in the head really? so that the uh, the teeth and the um, tongue was showing through like there. they had so the teeth of a horse cut it here they've actually cut it there and if, if you ever see oh, yeah. the film you'll see it that you will see the mouth and the tongue hanging out and uh, the eyes were pig's eyes. Which now he has no eyes, of course. <laughs> um, and then uh, the, the premise that they had used, of course, was that they had found it already shot and that it was dead by a creek bank and that they just figured out a way to get it back to their, um, their homes, I guess. Yeah. And here is a hole. Let's see, my hand goes in the hole right there. And out of that was uh, what turned out to be possum intestines. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a project. Yeah, right? <laughs> so even when they got the DNA test back of the intestine, because they were able to get to that, remember mm -hmm. it's still frozen, they're following FDA, or F, uh, F, they're following the guidelines, the, the federal guidelines, you can't just thaw a body out. Yeah. All that's toxic and it's all going somewhere. So they were really trying to follow that in the beginning. And uh, eventually they just said, Put some heat lamps on it. Let's, let's thaw it. Because they realized they were hoaxed. Yeah. But at first, when they tested the intestines, the DNA came back as possible. And Tom even asked the DNA people, well, is it possible that he had, this creature had eaten a possum recently, and that's what you're picking up because it is intestine? And they said, absolutely. So it still had, he still had hope. Yeah. That it wasn't, you know. But alas. <laughs> you got a little... The bobcat down there. Yeah, we thought that was uh, uh, prudent or proper, if you will, <laughs> because how many times in your life, if you're from this area or from the Appalachians, have you seen a bobcat? Never. <laughs> really? Now, see, I've seen one in my entire life, maybe really? twice. You know, and, and in fleeting. You know, yeah. once was actually once. See, the, one of those two times in my entire life was with the Searching for Bigfoot crew, and they had came to town and they were doing some research on Fondy Mountain. And we went up there, you might have saw it, it made the news, and we took uh, Caleb No with us. And we were out there where, where the mine shafts are, the, the air vents, and we were up on top of this mountain, and on our way out of there the next morning, because we, or uh, two days later rather, we stayed out there, uh, camped out, and it was early in the morning, and we saw Bobcat, and I mean, it was just a flash as it ran yeah. through the, uh, across the road into the woods again. And only two times in my life, but we all know they're out there. And um, I think that's a valid point. Um, I don't know if something like this does exist mm -hmm. or not, but I don't think the, the, the idea where people say, well, we would have seen it. I don't think that's necessarily true. necessarily true, because like the bobcat, and there's other creatures that nobody ever sees. Yeah. Check it out here, so this full cart here. This is really cool. Well, I'm gonna rearrange these a little bit. I need to move this. That shelf is very I mean, thin. as far as what we were gonna do with the history, that, that's no problem. We don't I can still that. help you. Uh, and yes, every southern to tourist line. attraction and museum yeah. needs to have a moonshine still. Or two. Check out this monstrous hair curling machine. It looks like something Dr. Frankenstein would use to curl hair. 
Okay, now this is pretty crazy. The, apparently the city of Middlesbrough actually sits in a giant crater from a meteorite. That's crazy. Oh, check out the squirrel. Look at those guts. Oh, Bigfoot guts. Okay. These are uh, the Kentucky prints that Searching for Bigfoot had found. And basically what they wanted to do is um, they give us everything they find in the state. So um, these are from Western Kentucky and uh, down around Mammoth Cave. These, the funny looking ones, are actually female. And evidently, the way it's been told to me, female footprints are super rare. At one time, these were the only ones in existence. And now if you look, there's probably more. And I think TJ and, and Tommy and them, they have more, right? But these, if you notice, there's a big difference. This looks like your stereotypical, what you think of as a Bigfoot footprint, mm -hmm. right? Don't these seem, I don't know, uh, they seem like lizard man-ish to me <laughs> or something. I, I don't know, they're different, right? See the elongated big toe? Yeah. And, uh, they're very long and thin, right? And that means, but, um, and this, this is hair samples. And it's just unidentified. Uh, it, it's not that it is Bigfoot hair, but it's unidentified hair sample. And a lot of times when they find this unidentified hair sample stuff, it comes out that they can't really tell. It gets confused. It's like, is it man? Is it, is it primate? And that's what they're looking for, is that, that one that seems to have these markers in it that are unexplainable. And that's why I'd say this stuff, uh, the kids love it, this is how they bait Bigfoot, supposedly. Uh, every is that a day, pinata? Well, he likes shiny stuff, and that's a glow stick, too, and he eats sardines and peanut butter. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And the can, if you notice the can on a string, what they do is they take this can on a string and they tie it to a branch totally out of reach from all animal and all man, right? Really high up on a branch, away from the tree. And the idea is you spread the peanut butter on it, some sardines, things like that, and he'll come and eat it. Uh, he's also known to give gifts according to them. So say he came and ate your peanut butter and he thought that was really good, he might leave you a robin feather. It's always amazing when a near epic fail transforms into an amazing experience. All right, so appreciate you guys watching. Come out here to Mills, Middlesboro, Kentucky, a city sitting within a meteor crater. And come see the Bell County Historical Museum where they have the infamous Sasquatch hoax. Remember to support your small town museums because that is a dying breed. All right, and I appreciate you watching my videos. If you like this, you know, give it a thumbs up, share it, all that good stuff. And uh, if you'd like to throw me a few dollars on Patreon, I'd be happy to uh, send you postcards while I'm out and about on my journeys. I also sell t-shirts, I got some new designs and they're down below. I appreciate it.